Good morning, everyone. Morning. Sure, we'll have some more people filling it, filing in, some stragglers. So feel free to grab a cup of coffee. Uh, we're going to get started here in just a couple couple minutes. Um, just a couple things, housekeeping things. Uh, we're here to build relationships, make connections. Um, so I encourage everyone to put your name and your company name on your little Brady Bunch square that we have here. Mm -hmm. Um, if you hover over your picture and click the three red, dot, three little dots, you can change your name. Uh, I just encourage everyone to put their name, put the business that they're with. That way uh, we can build some relationship, make some connections. We'll get started here in just a couple of minutes. Let some, let some of our stragglers come in. Uh, today we're talking about uh, building referral, referral partnerships, building relationships to help grow your business. Uh, we've got some, some awesome people here from Columbia. Glenn and Melanie Matthews from Modern Exterm Exterminating, Adam Vance from Sounds and Images. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves and, and get started here in a couple minutes. Uh, Susan, do you have any chamber updates while we're waiting for our last few attendees to, to trickle in? Absolutely. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us. And I also want to do a shout out to Anna Peterson. She puts together a great upcoming event um, email that sends out to everybody. So hopefully y'all are receiving that and you check it out on a regular basis. I uh, just wanted to point out a few things. The Columbia Mall has a, a vaccination process. It's very easy, I've been told. It's very fast and efficient. So if you need a vaccine or anybody else does, please um, check it out over at the Columbia Place Mall over on Decker Boulevard. We also have a ribbon cutting this afternoon at, from one to two at Ivy Creek on Two Notch Road and that's right next to Starbucks. So we'd love for y'all to join us there. And this Thursday, I'm really excited. It's the Chamber's first in public open air partner engagement. And it's gonna be at Adventure Museum. We hope y'all will come out. We'll be uh, COVID friendly and safe. We'll have a great time, good weather. So please come join us by the river. Um, and those are some of the big things that we have going on. We have um, a Leadership Columbia class coming up. And we have great candidates for that. We have a leadership conversation coming up with Dr. Bogart, and that will be on April the 27th, April 28th, for anybody that's new or any of our existing partners who want to find out more about the chamber or you want to know more about how do you uh, take advantage of the services of the chamber or even our website, we'd love for you to come join us um, on the 28th at 4 o'clock at the Zoom conference, too. And then last but not least, on May the 6th, we will have our huge golf tournament live and in person out at Fort Jackson. Uh, we're hoping to have about 120 folks come out. We'll be uh, COVID friendly and safe. It's going to be a great time. So if, if you want to sponsor or you want to play, bring a team out. Or if you want to volunteer and help us host everybody else, we'd love to have you. So thank you. If we can help you with any additional information on any of those, just give us a call and we're happy to. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Um, I'm going to encourage everyone to uh, we're going to get we're going to jump into a breakout room here in just a few minutes um, So turn your cameras on. We're going to have a little bit of a conversation uh, built some relationships. So I encourage everyone to turn your camera on because you're going to have to talk at least a little bit here in just a second. Um, so one of the things that the chamber has done recently to to try and add value more to small business and partners in general um, is we've partnered with the USC Technology Incubator the City of Columbia and Benedict College's Women in Business Center for a Grow with Google web, webinar series. It's been going, over, going on over the past couple months, uh, some really, really valuable information, uh, especially for a small business owner or anyone that is looking to, to have a, a better presence on Google. Um, it's a free webinar, so all you have to do is just sign up. I'm putting the link in the chat right now, uh, so feel free to, to register for that. That is next month. Um, we have them every every month, um, I believe. Let me see. I should have written down the date, but I believe it is May. I'll look for you, Jared. May twelfth, May twelfth from twelve to one. Um, so it's one hour. It's literally things that it's not it's not a sales pitch. It's not things that you need to know to uh, and, and have to spend money on. It's things that you can go into your Google account to to change and add value to make a difference to your business right now. Really, really valuable information. Um, so sign up for that, keep that in there. And for everyone who's here, uh, utilize the chat. If you have questions throughout our panel series, if you have questions for Melanie or Glenn or Adam, feel free to utilize the chat. Um, you can it, it, 
feel free to to unmute yourself. We'll give you a, a time to to speak to the to the panelists. Um, but we want to make this as, as engaging as conversational as possible. Um, I'm also going to encourage everyone to drop their information in the chat. Um, it's a great way just to be able to follow up with people, to build relationships, build connections. Um, and that's our goal here at the chamber is to be able to add value and connect those of you with the people that you need to grow your business. So utilize the chat, drop your information. You can save the chat. If you open it up, click the three, three little dots. Um, you can save it so you get everybody's information, all these links uh, moving forward so you don't miss out on any information. Um, we are going to jump into a breakout room. And our conversation today is how have you leveraged relationships in building your business and what organizations have helped you grow? So different organizations like Rotaries or, or Chambers or BNIs or different things like that. Uh, what have you done? What groups have you joined that you found value in? And how have you been able to leverage those groups, build relationships to help grow your business? So we're going to jump into a breakout room. I'm going to drop that question in the chat just in case uh, you guys need it. And we'll jump to the breakout room and we'll come right back here to, to discuss some of the things that we talked about. So turn your cameras on, get ready to have a little bit of a conversation, introduce yourself, um, and we'll see you back here shortly. Welcome back, everybody. As everybody's coming back in, I want to go ahead and encourage and just remind everyone um, we're here to build relationships, make connections. Um, so hover over your picture, click the three dots and rename yourself. Make sure you have your name and the name of your business. Um, we want to want to build as much stickiness as possible. So I would love for some, if, if someone could, could see one of you and, and say, oh, I need to connect with that person or I need to connect with that business. That's what we aim to do. So make sure you have your, your business name up there. Um, we're here to build connections, add value to small business. Uh, our question for the breakout was how have you leveraged relationships in business and what organizations have, have helped you grow? Um, I think there's a ton of great organizations in Columbia, in our state as a whole that you can leverage. And something that someone mentioned in our breakout room was you don't know what you don't know. So a lot of times it's, it's just being aware of some of the associations and groups and, and things that you can get involved in. Um, an example of that for me, and then I'll kind of turn it over to anybody else who wants to share an example is, uh, I work for Splash. We are a marketing and advertising agency. Um, and an industry we've had success with is, is manufacturers. Um, so something this year as a goal of mine is to get involved with the South Carolina Manufacturers Association, um, simply because we know we've had success with manufacturers and that's an association full of manufacturers. So figure if I can position myself in a room full of those people, make a couple connections, hopefully that will, will help me build some relationships and, and provide me with the type of ideal clients that, that we want, you know, the, the ones that, uh, that, that are the least amount of headache and, and are fun to deal with. And you can, it's always better to do business with those that you know, like, and trust. Um, I want to open it up to anybody. Does anybody, did anybody else have anything great from their breakout session? Anything that you want to add? Any good associations or any other organizations that you guys are involved in where you've had success? Um, feel free to unmute yourself and share. Uh, hey, this is Adam Vance, Sound and Images. Jared, uh, I'm, I'm a member of a group called Columbia Executive and Owners Association. And it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like a BNI, I guess, and, and it has generally about 100 members. Primarily, it's, it's the owners of the business or top executive and so we see each other every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m and and uh it, it's I've been in almost three years now and and a, a lot of things that I've learned from it is you know when when you join something sometimes everything's such a you know immediate return I, I need something quick and now and and, and that's not quite how it works it's it, it's just like we, we were talking on our breakout group that you have to cultivate the relationships in the group and so uh, it it, it takes a while. And so probably about year two is when things started, you know, coming back. I mean, you start doing business with everybody and then gradually it comes back to you. And uh, th this group at the moment is, um, is down a little bit in participation as I imagine maybe some through COVID. We, we did sort of a, we did an all virtual then, then hybrid. And then now we're back spread out at Capital City Club. But 
But uh, the, the Columbia Executive Owner Association is, has been um, been very worthwhile for, for me and for sound and images. That's awesome, Adam. Uh, there's there's obviously a, there's a lot of organizations similar to the CEOA. There's the, there's BNI as you mentioned. There's the chambers, obviously. And I think that there's one thing that we that everybody should take away from this is is you obviously can't join every group, right? But you can't not do anything at all. So it's understanding the value that each one of those groups bring and how it might be able to add value to your business. Because what what is successful for for Adam or Glenn and Melanie or myself or, or Anna Edmonds um, might not work for somebody else. You know, it, it, it's all about uh, just getting involved. It, I, I would say any type of membership organization is similar to a, a gym membership. You don't just join the gym and all of a sudden you're in shape. You know, you got to show up, you got to do the push ups. Um, you get, you get out what you put in. So I think it's just vetting those opportunities and vetting those businesses. And you, there's one word that you said is cultivating those relationships. You know, rela building relationship capital um, is like farming business. It doesn't, you don't just build a relationship and do business like that. You know, people want to do business with those that they know, like, and trust. And it takes a little bit of a process to be able to establish that trust and establish that relationship. Um, does anybody else have anything that they want to share that was productive out of their breakout meeting? If not, we're going to jump into our panel session. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our first or two of our panelists um, with Modern Exterminating, Glenn and Melanie Matthews. Glenn, if you and Melanie want to take a couple seconds just to introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Glenn Matthews. I'm owner of a um, third generation owner of Modern Exterminating Company. Um, my granddad started our company in 1955. And um, so uh, we are the oldest, or I like to say most experienced uh, pest control company in Columbia area, and our private, privately owned uh, pest control company. And uh, we have a ranch in Le Lexington now as well. So we're really excited about that. And uh, I'll turn it over to my teammate, uh, Melanie, and my wife. Hey, I'm Melanie Matthews, and I'm his wife. Um, I left teaching two years ago to come work in family business. It's been an awesome experience. Um, we've grown since that, and I've been here to see a lot of it. And so um, I'm super excited to be here today and kind of share what we've been doing since I've been at Modern. Appreciate you guys. You know, I, I've, I've I actually met Glenn and Melanie through a, either a chamber or another association or organization, um, learned a little bit about their business. And one thing that's really cool about Modern is that they, Back when they started in 1955, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, they still have one of their two original customers, um, yes. which is really, uh, really cool. We're real proud of that. Uh, we've had this, uh, one of our original customers for 65 plus years now, so I think that says a lot about us. That's, that's, that's pretty sweet, and that can show you just the power of building those relationships. You know, it's it, somebody that you've done business with for, for 60 plus years, that's, uh, they're probably uh, speak pretty highly of modern, so uh, that's that's what we hope for for all of our customers. Um, our other panelists, Adam Vance of Sounds and Images. Adam, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you, Jared. Yeah, my name is Adam Vance, and and I'm the owner of Sound and Images. We're a 40 year uh, 40 year business, started in 1981 by Eddie Wright, and then I, um, after seven years of being GM of a large tent and event rental company and a longtime client of Sound and Images. Eddie wanted to retire and, and approached me to, to purchase the company. So we just passed our five-year anniversary with me. But uh, we're a commercial audiovisual installation company. We do a lot more than that, too. We've, we've been very involved with events for 40 years, and, and we, we share some clients that go back to the State House, for example, uh, all the way back to when, when Eddie founded the company. When I took over, we really increased our commercial AV installation side of the business. I've got two teenagers and they're gonna be going to college soon and events are spring and fall and that's not counting COVID, of course. So COVID took care of all the events uh, for over a year and they're starting to trickle back, but we, we, can, we can scale up. We installed everything in the house chamber of the state house when I first started, part of a large project of four vendors. We do a lot of conference rooms boardrooms. Uh, we've done Hammonds Stadium, football, gymnasiums, 
Um, nothing's too big or too small, but I, I do like to say we're a small company that, that, that does big things. And um, as the events start coming back in the ER, we're picking up graduations and, and other events such as that. But um, anyway, just happy to be on this panel, Jared, and, and thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate you, Adam. Anything visually or with a, with speakers or microphones? I know, especially before COVID, I feel like anytime you could hear someone speaking over a loudspeaker, it was Adam and his guys involved, and they do great work. We're happy to have some great panelists today. Um, so to, to build off of kind of what we talked about earlier is you don't know what you don't know. So this is a question for all three of you guys. Um, what, what organizations are you? Are you, are you involved in? Obviously, the Columbia Chamber. Um, Adam, you mentioned the CEOA. Glenn, what, uh, what, what are you specifically involved in? I'll kick it to Melanie to talk about what I know you guys kind of split some responsibilities and are involved in some different stuff. And then we'll wrap up with Adam for that question. So Glenn, what are, what are some of the organizations that you are involved in? I always like to say what organizations I'm not involved in. Yeah. There, but um, we're in uh, three b and chapters. Um, I'm personally the representative of the Builders Industry Association. I'm on the SMC board, which is a Builders Industry Association uh, offshoot. I'm in the EAGC, which is similar to the CEOA. It's the Executives Association of Greater Columbia. We have about 125 executives that meet every Tuesday morning. I'm in the Columbia Chamber, Irmo Chamber, Lexington Chamber, Chapin Chamber, Columbia, Casey West Columbia Chamber, I'm the president-elect of Rotary, of Columbia Rotary Club. I'm in Alliance Club. I'm president-elect of the South Carolina Pest Control Association, and I'm on the board of another pest control association. So I do not say no very well. So that's one of my things that I need to start delegating more and more. So uh, it seems like I spend more of my time uh, networking than I do actually doing, running my business sometimes. So I probably need to uh, cool down on some of that and say no to some of it, but I love it. It's grown our business and it's really been something that I've been really involved with. And I, I can't say no, because I love people and I love networking. I, I am the same way. I have the, if somebody asked me to do something, I'm like, oh yeah, for sure. And I look at my calendar, it's like, oh, I, I, I've already committed to four other, other things. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to do this, but uh, I'm the same way. Melanie, I guess, aside from some of the things that are, are the various organizations that Glenn is involved in, I know that you guys don't, y'all don't necessarily double dip in everything, but are there a couple of other things that you do that are, that differ from what Glenn is involved in? Um, yes, we do actually double dip in a lot of those, but I'm actually in the Five Points Rotary Club. So um, we kind of separated out on that. And I'm also an ambassador for the Casey West Columbia Chamber. So I've kind of gotten heavily involved over on that end. Um, Oh gosh, what else do I do? I am a member of, a Zonta Club, of the Zonta Club of Columbia. I'm also a member of the Women's Club of the Midlands. I'm very involved on the professional women and pest management end of things. Um, so with actually a, the South Carolina Pest Control Association and with another organization within the pest control industry. Um, and when, when hired me, that was my job, was to come on board and literally network. Um, it was to be real involved with the chambers, it was to get involved with BIA, everything out there. Um, and we found that once I got here, I was better doing some of the, I guess, in-house office, Glenn, is that how you would say it, things? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he was actually the networking expert. Um, and so we've kind of switched our roles a little bit on that. Um, and, you know, honestly, I think when people see us coming at things, they see it as a package deal because we are both so involved in the same things and in different things. Definitely a package deal. I feel like I, I, if I see one of you, I know the other one's right around the corner. Uh, Adam, what, uh, what, what other organizations have you been involved in? How have you found success through some membership organizations? Yes, Jared. Um, like you said, Chamber of Commerce, obviously, which is, is huge for sound and images. CEOA, uh, also Committee of 100, and um, the Columbia Bridal Association. Committee of 100 is a lot of economic development. And, and Jared, as you mentioned, the SC Manufacturers Association, I've, I've worked with them personally and directly uh, for, for some years. And um, that, that is a, a great place to be involved with. Uh, if you can get an economic development with so much that's going on here and coming to the, to the Midlands. Uh, another thing, um, I, I, being in the Bridal Association, Sound and Images doesn't do a lot of weddings, but the reason that I'm in there is it keeps me in touch with all the venues and the, and the other vendors in the industry too. 
uh, weddings are not a big money maker for sound and images to, to go in there and do it, but it is very important. A lot of people don't realize it until they start doing their vows and nobody can hear them. And no offense to the DJs out there, but sometimes, you know, the DJ will run a speaker over there, but, um, you know, outside of weddings, I, I stay in the bridal association just for those relationships. Sort of on a different note, one thing that I've done is that we get very involved with nonprofits. And so it's sort of like an indirect organization. I, I serve on Harvest Hope. And when COVID hit, jumped in the food line there that, uh, on Shop Road and the distribution. And you would be amazed at who you meet when you're out there you know, serving, so to speak, just standing right next to you in line. I mean, it can be executives from Fortune 500 uh, to, to you know, everyday people. And so I, I strongly recommend getting involved that way. And it, it, it does help with networking. And then I've also been involved on many event boards too. Prisma Health for the drive, which got knocked out. It was a golf tournament. Um, right now, MidlandsCombine.org for Transitions SC. And uh, I, I recommend, you know, some of that kind of activity too. I, I know we're talking about networking groups, but, but, but that's sort of what we've done to sort of expand our, our reach. Yeah, that's awesome. There's, there's so much uh, to get involved in, you know, especially surface level. You, I feel like the chambers are always top of mind. M majority of people are aware about a chamber of commerce, um, but the different associations, the different specialized nonprofits, the, the women in pest control associations, or, or those different little things that can help you connect with the exact person or build relationships with with people that are like-minded that are looking to grow their business because you're, you're, you're it's not it, a transactional business. Isn't something that's very conducive for long-term growth. You know, if you're just, if you're trying to show up to events to sign contracts, there's only a, a limited number of people that you can do that with. Whereas if I'm building relationships with Adam and Glenn and Melanie, and they're aware of what we could possibly do and vice versa. If I'm aware of what they do, I don't have to necessarily be involved in every association, but I like to think that if I'm building relationships with Adam Glenn and Melanie and they're at a, an association that I'm not, I'm not at, and they, someone says, Oh, well, I need help with my website. Then they'll say, Oh, well, you should talk to Jared. Just like if I'm at something and I hear that, Oh, I need a new termite bond in my house or, or we're, we're setting my association is setting up this big event. Uh, we're having a big conference and we need some audio visual equipment. I'm going to be able to refer them straight to Adam. Uh, so it's about building those relationships with people to, to almost build a, a secondary sales force, because when you build those relationships with people and they get to know you and get to trust you and you deliver on the things that you want to, or that you, that you are promising, then that, uh, that is conducive for some brand loyalty, some long-term growth, some sustainable growth. Um, Obviously, there's a ton of stuff that we just talked about, a ton, ton of different associations. If you guys have questions about how to get involved or you hear like, oh, that might be something that I want to get involved in, I'm encouraging if you haven't already done so, put your information in the chat. You can save the chat. So everybody's stuff that is in here, you can click the three little dots and save it. Reach out to that person after this. Say, hey, I heard you talk about the CEOA. And I'd like to see if I can get involved. That is literally what we are here to do today is to connect you with the people that can help you grow your business. So you please utilize the chat. Please utilize it for your, for your own information to put in there so people can reach out to you. And if you have any questions throughout, please feel free to ask those questions. So with everything that you can get involved in, and I'm going to kick it right back to you, Adam. We'll just go uh, reverse order this time. How do you decide which ones you know, we all have a, a limited amount of time, you know, you can't, you can't make it everything. So how do you decide, Adam, how did you decide that these are the organizations that I'm going to serve with, or these are the nonprofits? Was it a, what, was it a, 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 a mission that each organization has? Is it a, a specific target audience? What, what factored into that uh, for, to you deciding to commit to those memberships and organizations? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I mean, for committee of 100, uh, S and I had been involved with that for years prior to me, and 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 I like uh, continuing on some of what Eddie started, but also, um, you know, I'm I'm Adam now, and of course, you know, he he's Eddie for for uh, the the CEOA. The main reason I was talking about on, on the breakout why I got involved with that is that the previous owner was involved with another group for years and years and years, and also another owner that I worked for the tent rental company was involved with that same organization. They all just thought, Adam, you're going to go join that group, right? And I'm thinking to myself, 
I know 99% of the people in that group. No offense, but I mean, I already, I already know them. And so then I, 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 uh, I was working at an event um, and Michael Oana was there and he, he started CEOA 25 years ago, which stuck in my head too, that it's been around that long. And while we were talking, um, he invited me to the meeting. So I go to the, go to the meeting and I knew maybe 15% of the people in the room. So I thought to myself, which one is going to help me get to know more people and, and, and get out there and, and tell them about sound and images, you know, the, the older group or, or the, the new group. So that's why I chose CEOA. And um, it, it's, it's really been very helpful. And one thing I wanted to add about being in those groups weekly is that we get so much done at every meeting. Like when you start, I've got three things going on with this person. I've got four things going on with that person. And it really boils down to the service that we end up giving our clients. Same thing at the bridal association meetings. I was a part of that for years being the GM of that tent company. And um, you know, we were big on weddings. I'd have 20, 30 weddings in a weekend and I still have hair somehow, I don't know. But, but, <laughs> um, but, but it, <laughs> anyway, but I, I stay in that group because all the vendors in there were kind of the lifers. You know, when you hire sound and images, you're hiring me and our company for our relationships. You don't quite realize that. But when, when I'm in charge of an event, I bring in all only the same groups that I've used for years and years, and I've cultivated those through through working and through through these groups as well. And so we get so much done before and after a meeting, just just chit chatting. You know, hey, what's going on with the derby party? What's going on with that graduation? Hey, we got an inauguration coming up. Blah blah blah. So um, I, I choose to go to the groups. Um, I, I do like to know what their mission is, of course, and that's kind of where I've gone off into the nonprofit side of things, charitable organizations. But, but also just making sure that I don't, I don't know everybody in there and, and I need to, you know, be a little more forward and go out and go, hi, I'm out of, you know, and start meeting people. So that, that's sort of where I, how I chose that. Awesome. Glenn and Melanie, I guess, it, I would assume it's it, with, with you guys being involved in, in the same business, almost a divide and conquer kind of how we've talked about, but how did, how have you guys chosen some of the other organizations? What's gone into that process? How did you guys or what made you decide that, hey, I'm going to get involved with the chambers or, or different organizations? I think both of us like to meet people. Um, I think for us, it's the relationship. It's the connection. It's going in and, you know, first of all, not walking in and looking at it as a sale or a potential sale, but walking in and look at it as we're going to make some friends here. We're going to make some connections that may help us, you know, and if we get some benefit out of that, that's great. Um, Glenn, jump in there, but would you agree with that? I would, and I also just like to surround myself with uh, successful people, and I believe you're successful if you surround yourself with successful people, and so uh, that's that's why I do it, and um, obviously you want to get involved with things that align with your values, that align with your business, but also I want to be around people that are like-minded, own businesses, are successful with them, that can help me, that can teach me things. I don't really go to things to get business. I'm, I, I go to them to learn. And then, um, you know, down the road, we do get business, but uh, it's not an overnight thing. I mean, I've had people call me two years, three years later, you know, uh, oh yeah, you remember I met you at that uh, chamber thing or at this uh, BNI thing. And, and I'm, I'm surprised when it happens sometimes. We'll actually have people stop us occasionally and say, hey, I met you like three years ago at something. And I'll be honest, it's somebody that just in passing, we don't even remember, but they still made that connection. Yeah, I would, I, I would think between uh, you and Glenn, Melanie, and, and Adam and I in 2019, there probably wasn't an event that one of us was at within, within Columbia for sure. Um, that being said, you know, getting involved in these, in these organizations, it's all, it's, it's tough to measure success. So how, like at the end of the year, when you're, when you're doing, when you're looking at your, your P and L's and you're looking at your sponsorships and membership fees and you say, well, okay, we invested X amount in this organization. What did we get out of it? You know, it's it, in, when you're building relationships, it's kind of tough to measure that. How have you guys, and I'll, I'll kick it back to you, Glenn, how have you been able to measure success, if at all? How, how have you been able to measure success that comes from the Rotaries, the DNIs, the Chamber memberships, the BIAs? How, how have you been able to, to judge whether or not those are successful? 
I think it's a gut feel on a lot of it. And uh, I think sometimes, you know, um, you'll just hear buzz, you'll hear chatter. Like I'll look on the Soto City Connectors page, I guess if everybody's on that on Facebook, uh, a lot of times, uh, a lot of the people you meet out networking will then refer you on that. They'll refer you um, in their personal lives or in their business lives. And a lot of times it's hard to get a feel on that uh, other than just kind of the buzz you kind of hear around your phone start ringing, you, you, you kind of get a gut feel on it. If I sat there and looked at it on a PL and all my time, I probably wouldn't do it uh, sometimes on some of the stuff. But uh, I just, you know, I just get a gut feel on, on, on what's working for us and what doesn't. And um, I can usually tell when our networking's working because people around town are then referring us on Facebook. They're referring us on, on different uh, social media platforms. So I can usually tell that way. And sometimes we can actually see it in the numbers. Um, one thing we didn't even talk about that we're members of is the apartment association. And when we joined it a couple of years ago, Glenn and I both like jumped in full force, getting involved on some of the committees there. And now we're coming up on two years, I believe, as membership. And we're starting to see some fruits of that. Um, it seems like every other day we're getting an apartment community calling and saying, you know, hey, we know y'all are involved in this and your name came up. Can you come out and give us a quote? And, you know, things like that. So we, so occasionally it is an organization that we do see some measurable numbers for. And that happens to be we one We started of the apartment association. I think we had one or two apartment. Now we got about seven or eight and we're probably going to have 10 or 12 by the end of the year. So That's I mean, awesome. How about you, Adam? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not immediate. Um, anyone here that answers the phone, if it's Susie or whomever, one thing I always want to know when somebody calls and they ask for either me by name or I just, I just want to know how did they hear about us? I mean, was it marketing or is it a referral from, from networking? Do I need to call and thank somebody? And so, I mean, it can be as simple as that. With, with the groups, it, you know, it, it is really nothing that, that you can um, quantify immediately. And, and again, a lot of, a lot of us in this day and age want immediate return. And that's just not how it works. I mean, even in our sales, I mean, you can think of clients that you have known and like we said, cultivated over a long, long time. Uh, I used to have a lady that would get 10 chairs a year, 10 folding chairs a year. And, and, you know, somebody was like, gosh, she's only spending 10 bucks a year. Well, guess what? She ended up doing like a $30,000 wedding. Um, a little bit, a little bit longer. Um, so, so you, you know, you, you can't kind of judge the book by its cover early on. I have noticed in CEO A, after about year one, we get to give a presentation on our business. And I've not been in BNI, but um, CEO A, about every 12 to 14 months, you, you cycle around and then you get to give about a 15 minute talk about your business. And then you get to show exactly what you want people to see that you do. Because I have people all the time just go, Adam, what do you do? I mean, especially if they see some of our crazy posts, but we're, we're involved in just a lot. But when I can give that presentation after that, I notice that, that the chatter between the group really, really increases and, and the referrals. So uh, I have been able to know, notice, you know, we, we keep a tab of every week, how much business did you, did you do with the group? And so an actual number, an approximate number. So you can see that. And I definitely noticed it going up in year one and then definitely into year two. And now I'm working on year three. And, and I did sign a pretty major contact uh, contract to do a, a very large LED wall inside an auto dealership for one of the members um, in a new expansion project. And you know, somebody would never think that that's something that we do, but it is. So when you walk in there and that's a, it was a, a low six figure contract not a high, high net profit kind of thing, but a very good project for us to do to showcase, you know, work that Sound and Images is capable of. So uh, you, you, you get out what you put in basically and it, it takes time is, is how I feel about it. That was an awesome answer. You teed up my uh, next, que next question. Um, but before we move on to the next question, uh, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of intangibles that you get from joining some of these organizations. Um, when you're in an organization full of like-minded, growth-minded individuals, you're not, or at least it, for me, I don't want to be the low man on the totem pole. You know, I'm, if everybody else's is game is up here, then I'm trying to step my game up too. So just the, the, the fact of having people that challenge you and push you to, to be a, 
a better business owner or executive or, or, or salesperson or whatever it might be. That's one of the benefits. I tell you, I, uh, I got involved with the Columbia Chamber around three years ago, um, had never done any type of public speaking engagement, um, was given the opportunity to speak at one of these breakouts in Panera Bread on Gervais Street was packed out. I was talking about marketing, something I talk about every single day, but I was nervous, sweating. I wore all black because I was so nervous that I didn't want my sweat to be showing through my shirt and everything. Um, but now I've done dozens and dozens of public speaking engagements and have made numerous connections from serving as the small business council chair um, that are in, in, immeasurable. Um, it, there's, there's, it, it, not everything is necessarily, okay, I joined today and I sign this contract tomorrow, right? It's, there's, much, there, there's a lot more value that can be added than just to your bottom line. Um, but to, to get into that, to, Adam mentioned uh, his presentation that he gets to do in, his, in the CEO, CEO A group that he's a part of. Um, and that's one of the, the bigger things when you're involved in one of these organizations is teaching people, educating them on how to refer you. Because not everyone looks at their AV equipment the way Adam does. I know I certainly don't. I don't. I I couldn't tell you what's good and what's not. And don't ask me to crawl up under a house or to look at someone's foundation or to to try and judge if they have termite damage or some type of. I mean, I probably could. Uh, I guess guess if they had bed bugs, you know, because that's uh, a a little bit obvious. But uh, how do you? And I'll kick it right back to you, Adam. How do you? coach people, educate them without overwhelming them? How do you teach people to refer sounds and images? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, Jared. I, I mean, at CEOA, every week when, we, when we're there physically, which we're now spread out, you stand up and I go, hi, I'm Adam Vance. My company is Sound and Images. We're a commercial audit, blah, 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 blah. And a great referral for us is. And uh, I, one thing that I found is that, you know, like you said, audiovisual equipment. I, I never, I didn't know much about it. When I just knew that when I hired sound and images to do an event, maybe a groundbreaking with the governor or something, that those people knew what they were doing. It is a science on, on the event side of things, um, and, and trying to explain that uh, to people um, is is a challenge. But I, I try to just keep it down in layman's terms, which is how I, I am because I'm still learning a lot of this. But you know that we'll do your from your your boardrooms, your conference rooms, to large scale, just anything commercial. A lot of times we get confused with residential, and I, I try to. I, I always say I don't want a, you know somebody watching a game on Saturday and the cable goes out and then they're blowing me up because they think it's us. And so we stick mainly with the commercial side of things. But it, when you're doing that presentation, it, visual is best. I mean, just pictures, um, um, showing pictures of what we do. The video conference in the boardrooms, the, the, the PA systems in gymnasiums, uh, you know, concerts outside and we have the large PAs up. But but mainly, uh, I think if you're out selling and have a little iPad showing what you do is, is, is best because I don't do a great job of explaining as you can you can tell right now. <laughs> but um, visuals, visuals definitely help. Definitely anything that especially for me, I feel like if you could show me a picture or something that uh, will resonate a little bit that uh, that always that always can help. Um, Glenn and Melanie, how do you, how do you guys teach people to refer you? You know, it might be a little bit easier because you guys are, are dealing with, with things that you can, you can definitely see. I think, I think everybody's seen either an ant or some type of bug in your house at some point. Uh, how do you guys coach people up on, on how to refer you? I think sometimes it's just the relationships and building it with the people and building the trust and, you know, letting them know hey, we're real people and this is what we do. And I, we see a good bit of that, that someone will say, well, so-and-so trusts you. So I feel like I can as well. Well, one thing that we have going for us is our, what we do is in our name, modern exterminating. I mean, it's, it's um, uh, termite, pest control, mosquito. A lot of people don't know we do mosquitoes. So I do have to kind of refer people, I mean, kind of refresh people on that. They think the only people that can do mosquito are people with mosquito in their name. But obviously, no. I mean, we do that as well. But luckily, we have a name that kind of produces what we do. And and uh, uh, obviously, I think that um, our you know long business standing, 50, 65 years, helps. And so I, I just think that, um, you know, it's, you know, you just got to keep it in the forefront. Maybe just kind of remind people of what you do. 
But at the end of the day, hopefully if people see, you know, termite swarming or something, they will give us a call. Awesome. So we're, we have just a few minutes left. I want to open up the floor to anybody that might have a question, whether you have a question that's specific to Glenn, Melanie, or Adam, or about maybe one of the organizations that they've mentioned. Like I said, if you've heard anything that you think, oh, that might be a good place for me to get involved in or me plug in, um, we, that's, that's our goal today is to build a little bit of awareness around the, the different organizations and activities that you can get involved in to try and help grow your business. Um, so if anybody has anything that they'd like to share before we wrap up, I'll go ahead and go ahead and unmute yourself and, and feel free to ask away. Hey, this is Jeannie Reynolds with Cola Daily. I do have a question. When y'all were talking about getting involved in nonprofits and charity organizations, is that from a networking standpoint or because you have a passion for that or because you think it's important to show that your company cares about the community or just could you talk a little bit more about being involved in the nonprofit side? Uh, well, this is Adam. I, I, I mentioned part of that earlier. I just, uh, I got more, more involved when COVID hit and I, I don't, I don't like just sitting around. Um, all the employees were at home and I just went and jumped in the line and it's more of a personal thing, but we, we've always been involved in different organizations and, and um, it, it's, it's not to network. I, it, it more was a networking was a byproduct of it just because you're just meeting more people that you would not have met before and you're all there for a common reason of, of doing something good. We're, we're also involved with about every nonprofit gala, gala you can think of when they had the big dinners, et cetera. And Sound and Images has always been um, a true partner in those with our sponsorship. So it, it's more of a personal thing. And it, it, it's what I preach at home to the teenagers. It's, you know, we serve at our church, et cetera. Uh, just but being active, active in something is, is going to is going to benefit the small business owner, in my opinion, much more than than staying back here behind the desk. But I, I do enjoy any kind of um, activity like that that is philanthropic and charitable. We think it's a combination, of a little bit of both. But I mean, obviously, you want to you want to donate your time to someone that you uh believe in, in in a charity you believe in something you really have a heart for and but also it does create networking opportunities i have gotten some business off of uh off of that um obviously that's not my first thing that i want off off of that but but it's a byproduct of it and uh we're involved in quite a few uh nonprofits as well and melanie you're on the board of therapy place and so we we enjoy that that as well so we we do a lot of that and it's very important and, and we get a little bit of business as well. So it, it works for everything. Gwen's grandmother left a really good legacy of being involved in the community and giving back to the community. Um, and I think that's something that she instilled in us that was important that, you know, if you have a, this business, it's successful, you have that responsibility to give back and to help others. I've got a, a shameless plug. I serve on the board of Columbia Opportunity Resource. Um, we started out as a young professionals group, uh, but recently over in the past 18 months, we've really shifted, um, started partnering with Midlands Business Leadership Group on a talent retention initiative. You know, I'm, I'm, from, a, I'm from Columbia. I'm a product of Columbia. I feel like a lot of young people, especially out of college, view success as moving to Charlotte or Atlanta, regardless of maybe what uh, your profession might be. Um, so we're trying to to come up with initiatives to keep to to retain some of the talent that's here from the local universities um, to retain some of those young people. And that's called Columbia Opportunity Resource. If you'd like to get involved, I'd uh, love to have you. My information's in the chat, so feel free to shoot me an email. Um, but the reason I've gotten involved in that is because of the economic development piece and and having people see how much Columbia has changed. Uh, I was talking with Trayvon, uh, who's with City of Columbia. He's also a product of Columbia and how much Columbia has changed in the past five years, and let alone the past 15, 20 years. It's, it's crazy. So 
I look forward to seeing that growth. And, and that's something that, that I've been involved with, a nonprofit I've been involved in, um, which has also connected me with a lot of, uh, of other businesses and organizations and like-minded young professionals um, to build those relationships that hopefully 10, 15 years down the road um, can, help, can help me and, or help the community in some way. Um, but I think any nonprofit or any organization that you can get involved in, as long as you have the capacity, I think is the most important thing. You know, there's a lot of a lot of people like Glenn and I that will say yes to a lot of things. But if if you can, it's it's great to say yes. But if you can't do anything and you can't get involved and you can't show up, you can't can't do those push ups, um, then it's 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 all good intentions. So uh, I think one thing that I've taken away is is just making sure that these organizations that you get involved in, you're getting involved in for the right reasons. You know, you're not just there to sign contracts. You're there to really add value and build relationships and, and also just to, to make sure that you have the capacity and availability to, to add value to those that are there, because you don't want to just be taking up a seat um, just to fill a seat. You want to be a, make sure you add value as much as possible. Um, running, we've got a couple more minutes. I want to wrap up, make sure that it, does anybody else have any more questions before I uh, kick it over to Susan for any last minute chamber updates or anything else? Awesome. Susan, do you have you have anything you want to add before we go? Absolutely. I just want to tell everybody thank you. I heard a lot of great ideas, a lot of great organizations, and especially the nonprofits, because when you give from your heart, you're giving so much and getting so much in return. So thank you all for your participation. Also wanted to do a shout out, Jeannie and our small groups said that the small business breakouts have been invaluable. So thank you, Jeannie, for that. And um, thank you all for coming and participating. We've had great participation with these. We're hoping that when we regain our in-person meetings that we will continue. So when we do that, we'll have a hybrid. And just a plug for um, the chamber, of course, as your greatest networking opportunity, because we have over 1,100 partners. And so if you want to get involved from small business, from diplomats, partner retention, military relations, um, the golf will have over 180, 200 uh, local business executives you want to come out there so just um, partner orientation a lot of great opportunities for y'all to participate and we couldn't do what we do at the chamber if y'all didn't do what you do with small business so we look forward to um, celebrating y'all in may at our upcoming small business week and our um, meeting with the local ceos we have um, tim james from over at casey west columbia carl blackson from our chamber and Angel uh, Laborde from over at Lexington. So that'll be a great discussion on um, shopping small and uh, saving our local businesses. And then also wanted to just say thank you to Jared for his great work at Splash Omnimedia for sponsoring and also to Blue Cross Blue Shield for sponsoring. So um, hope you all have a wonderful, successful day. It's great seeing all these bright smiles. And uh, if we can help you, please give us a call because we are here to serve and assist you. So thank you very much and have a delightful day. Great. Thanks, Thanks for having us. All right. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thank you all. Everyone. Have a great thank one. Thank you, Melanie, Glenn, and Adam. Y'all did great. Uh, thank you so Bye much for having us. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Take care. Thanks, Melanie.